photo shoot fresh Looking like wealth I'm about to call a paparazzi on myself uh. What's good you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because we're doing a day in the life of a content creator today. I have some stuff to get done and I really want to take you guys along with me. I always tell you guys this, but I feel like I'm learning and understanding this business more and more every single day. And I want to share with you guys more of what that journey looks like, the things that I'm learning and things that I wish people would have told me before I jumped into doing this full time because there's a lot of things that you learn as you go that I feel like would be nice if people were a little bit more transparent about. So I have a few things that I need to get done today. I need to shoot some content. I have a TikTok and Instagram story that I need to shoot. I also need to do some editing. Editing. Um, I need to answer some emails because I've been really bad about that But I also really want to chat with you guys and answer some common questions that I've gotten about creating content And again, just share with you guys things that I wish I knew before I jumped into this business Now that I don't have to worry about nine to five and I don't have to like cram in content in between work meetings and getting stuff done for my job um, I'm really trying to figure out like what schedule works best for me because I'm just very new to this and I'm I've never worked for myself before so I think I've noticed the best way for me to work is get anything creative done in the morning. So shooting content, doing some editing, all of that stuff that requires me to like be creative. I think I like doing that in the first half of my day. And then the admin stuff like emails, invoicing, planning content, all that stuff I will do in the second half of my day. I think that's what works best for me. But again, I'm still kind of experimenting and trying things out. But that all to say, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the content first today and show you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes for that. So today, like I said, I do need to do an Instagram story and a TikTok for a brand. I'm actually gonna be shooting some content for Ana Luisa, which I'm I'm super excited that Ana Luisa is sponsoring this video today. If you guys have never heard of them, they are a sustainably made jewelry brand and they make beautiful jewelry, like very, very high quality. But again, it's made sustainably, which to me is just really, really important. They make their jewelry from recycled materials whenever they can. They do small batch designs, which means it's not feeding into fast fashion and over consumerism. So they sent me three pieces of jewelry. I'm gonna show you guys what they sent me real quick. I don't buy a lot of jewelry for myself, but you can definitely tell the difference between like high quality pieces of jewelry and jewelry that's not high quality. And this is like very, very nice. So the first thing that they sent me are these earrings, which I think are absolutely gorgeous. They're like these very simple, dainty gold hoop earrings. I don't have a lot of gold hoop earrings, but these are just very, again, very high quality. And then I also got a necklace and a pair of earrings. And you guys, I'm obsessed with the design on these. These are such a vibe for the summer. Um, these earrings are like these little circular, I don't have any earrings like these, but like this little circular um, shape with this design is absolutely beautiful. I feel like these would go with like some really colorful outfits for the summer. And then I got this necklace that matches it, which again, I'm just really, really obsessed with. I think I'm gonna do like some detailed like, you know, like the little cute detailed jewelry close-up shots. I'm gonna do some stuff like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started with this content and then I'll chat with you guys a little bit later. Okay, so this is my little setup for shooting. <laughs> it looks very chaotic, but I like to shoot like right here by my bedroom window because the lighting here is amazing. And then I also like to use like whenever I'm doing product shots, I like to use like this little sheet right here as a backdrop. I don't use a sheet for anything else besides content, but it just makes it look like more neat and organized and like having my floor, like my carpet, you know, like in the background. So yeah, let's go ahead and get to shooting. I think I want to go ahead and do the TikTok first just because it requires more talking. My TikToks where I'm talking do so much better than TikToks where I'm just like playing music in the background, like showing how cute I look. So when I'm doing branded content, I like to keep that kind of stuff in mind, not only because I obviously want the content to perform well for the brand, but also because I don't want to do branded content on my TikTok that's like super far left from the usual content that I do because I think it just feels very inauthentic when you do stuff like that. So I want to make sure that my sponsored content aligns with my usual content that people enjoy from me, right? So I like to do a lot. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you guys know I do a lot of get dressed with me's. Um, so I wanna go ahead and keep doing that for this video. So I went ahead and put on the jewelry, as you guys can see. It looks so, so cute with this outfit. So I'm just gonna do a very, again, like very normal chit chat video where I'm showing people on TikTok my outfit. Cause again, that's what people like on my page. So we're gonna go ahead and film this right now and you guys can see me doing it behind the scenes. 
I always like just kneel here in front of my window because this lighting is so good. I'm shooting some content today. Today's officially my first day getting cute as a full-time content creator. So I'm gonna show you guys what I'm wearing. This set is from Pretty Little Thing, just super comfy and cozy. And then my jewelry is from Ana Luisa. I'm absolutely obsessed with these designs. I feel really cute. So yay, let's get started. So yay, let's start our day. So yay, let's start our day. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and edit it real quick and then I will chat with you guys in a second. Okay, so I just finished editing my TikTok. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the Instagram story. So we're just gonna lay this out and make it look all cute. Live from the Mercer, run up on Yeezy the wrong way, I might murk you. Flee in the G450, I might surface. Political refugee asylum can be purchased. Uh, everything's just trying this out with a few props just to see how I like it. Five passports, I'm never going to jail. I made Jesus walk, I'm never going to hell. Control level flow is never going on sale. Hi right, guys, so I just finished taking my Instagram story pictures. I just decided on a final product and this is what it looks like. I think it does a good job of capturing the details and just how simple and beautiful the jewelry is. So thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. You guys can actually go shop them with my link down below. They're having a 20% off sale right now, which is amazing because again, their stuff is so high quality. So I definitely recommend you guys go check them out. And yeah, let's go ahead and get up off the floor, clean up this mess a little bit, and then we will chat here in a second. So now that I'm done shooting some content, I'm about to switch on over and do some editing here in a little bit But before I do that I get a lot of consistent like common questions that I get from you guys So I want to go ahead and answer some of those But I also want to give you guys some like, updates on what's been going on as far as the business side of YouTube goes Because there's been a lot of changes for me since I last did a day in the life of a content creator video So first things first obviously sponsorships and making money from YouTube It's like a big thing that I get questions on I did finally make a media kit and a rate card and that has completely I don't want to say changed the game for me but it's definitely made a huge difference in efficiency and it's really helped me when negotiating with brands so basically my media kit is a stat sheet that has all of my information on it from all of my um, platforms that I work with brands on. So I have YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, and I have like my follower count listed out. I have my metrics. So the main point of a media kit is really just to give brands an overview of how your channel's performing, what your demographics are. Cause one thing that's really, really important for brands is seeing like what your demographics are, like what your gender breakdown is, what countries um, are watching your channel the most, right? Or what age groups. It's just really important for brands to see that stuff just because they usually have targets target audiences that they're trying to reach. So I've definitely noticed whenever I'm working with brands, they will usually always ask for a screenshot of my audience like demographics. So it's really nice that I have it on my media kit because that way I can just give it to brands like from the jump when they first reach out to me. And then the other thing that I give to brands is my rate card. So my rate card has all of my rates listed on it for every single one of my platforms. Again, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And it has my rates broken down by like what service I would be, be providing. So like an Instagram post or an Instagram story would be a certain rate. My YouTube integrations would be a certain rate versus my YouTube, like a, a dedicated YouTube video, right? Um, and then I also have listed on there um, my follower account for each um, platform as well. So don't want to go too much into the nitty gritty because it's like that could be a whole different video in itself. I made both of those at the beginning of May. I actually just bought a template for my girl Naja. She has a really, really nice um, media kit and rate card template. So I'll link her website down below if you guys want to go check it out. It's a really affordable price too. So definitely recommend just using that, like plugging in your numbers, your pictures, customizing it however you want. And that way you can have something when you do work with brands, like to just give them right off the bat. I don't know what's going on with me, but my throat really like feels itchy right now. So sorry if I'm talking a little bit weird. I just feel like I'm struggling to talk. What's happening to me? Maybe I should make some tea. I will say as far as determining my rates and what I do wanna charge brands, like I said, I do try to stick with what's on my rate card because that is what brands will usually pay me. But obviously it does depend on the brand. It depends on the scope of work and what they want you to be doing. Some bigger brands will obviously be able to pay more because they usually have bigger budgets. But a lot of times I am open to like working with smaller brands and I might have to like cut my rate down a little bit so I can meet their budget. I'm really trying to stay away from doing 
gifted collaborations though, I will say. Just because some brands like don't have any budget at all, which I totally do understand. But for me as someone who, because like my plate is filling up, especially for YouTube, like I only have so many YouTube videos that I can put out. It's kind of like a, it's like, it's like having real estate, right? Like you have only so much real estate on your YouTube channel. So you really want to get as much value from it as you can. And for me, it's like my YouTube channel is just very near and dear to me. My audience, you guys, I really care about you guys. And I don't want to just be working with brands like willy nilly, especially not just for some free products. So um, I try to stay away from gifted collaborations. So yeah, that's it as far as um, negotiation goes. And now I kind of just want to touch on some things that I wish I would have known before starting like content creation. And I will say, I think my biggest piece of advice is if you have not started content creation yet, or you're like just now starting out, I really do advise you to focus on the fun, like doing this for fun first before you get too caught up in the money part, because I'm telling you if, and I know everyone says this, but if you will not, if you don't enjoy doing this for free, you're not going to get to a point where you start getting paid for it, in my opinion. Like, yes, you want to try to get monetized as soon as possible. It feels very, very nice to get paid to do what you love but I definitely suggest you focus on finding your passion in content creation and really figuring out if you are passionate about it because I do think a lot of people think that content creation is for them when in reality it's not and obviously it's a very sought after career like in this day and age so I totally totally understand if it's something that you maybe think that you want to do but I again highly suggest you focus on just doing it first before you focus too much on the money as long as you are working hard and putting out quality content you will eventually grow and brands will come to you. If you don't have a big enough platform, you cannot expect brands to want to invest their money into you. You have to prove to brands that you are going to give them a return on their investment, right? So I really, really encourage you to obviously try your best, reach out to brands, try to get as try to get monetized as soon as you can, but just focus on the content and getting and putting out the best content that you can. And I promise you, as you start to grow, the money will be less of a concern and you will you'll be able just to kind of have it come to you, right? So that's one thing that I really, really wish I would have known sooner because I think I was like, when I was a little bit smaller, I was like, when are brands gonna come to me? When am I gonna get to a point where I can do this full time? So I I really suggest you just kind of just just focus on having fun with it um and really just see if it's for you and try new things right don't niche down too soon don't feel like just because you had one video do kind of well that you maybe have to just start making content in that one niche explore experiment see what works for you and make content from the heart really at the end of the day i think the people who do shine through on youtube especially are people who make content that is true to them that makes sense to them so make content from your heart don't overthink it um and again don't overthink the monetization part too soon because it could really get you caught up in a trap of trying to chase the business before you're chasing um where you need to be to get the business to come to you. So yeah, like I said, I probably will do a Q&A um, where I answer more of your specific questions here pretty soon on my channel. So make sure you guys are following me on Instagram if you guys aren't already, because that's where I ask you guys to ask me questions. That being said, it's 1.30 right now, which I'm feeling really good about. I got all my content done today. I really had to film this video, so I'm glad that I did that. And I'm gonna go ahead and answer some emails because I'm super, super behind on my emails right now. I've just been doing a very bad job with it. So let's go ahead and switch gears and do that. I talked about this a little bit more in my last day in life of a content creator video, but I do have my content calendar here in my journal. And I always keep this by me whenever I'm answering emails. So that way, um, when a brand wants to schedule a post with me, I can just make sure that I'm ready it down here so um if you guys see me writing in this that's what i'm doing with that but yeah let me get back to my emails all right guys so i just finished going through all of my emails for the day and i'm definitely feeling very overwhelmed right now i really need to add some stuff to my to list for tomorrow i like to spend my fridays um, planning my content for the next week, but also just getting done as much administrative stuff as I can, just because Friday is the last days that brands are working. So I like to make sure that I'm getting all the emails that I need sent out, um, that everyone has what they need before the weekend starts. And then over the weekend, I will still do work myself. Like I'll do editing and shooting some content and stuff like that. But that's the kind of stuff that I don't really need to talk to any brands for, right? So I like to just make sure that I have everything that I need done on Friday. So I'm gonna make sure that I have everything on my to-do list 
for tomorrow done. Today's the first of the month, so I really need to go through and update my media kit and my rate card because I like to just update those monthly. So I'm gonna update my media kit and then I'm going to finish sending out emails tomorrow because um, I don't wanna send out, I look through all my emails and I know what I who I need to respond to, but I don't wanna send out emails until I have my latest media kit because my media kit is not up to date emails and then i'm going to plan my content tomorrow plan content okay so i want to spend the rest of the day because i do have um a video due tomorrow morning i want to spend the rest of the day editing um so that i can have this video done by tomorrow and then i also do have a video that i'm posting tomorrow so i'm going to go ahead and finish editing that as well i think it's pretty much done i just have to like add a little bit of b-roll and music and stuff but i think i'm going to go ahead and close out the video here let me know in the comments down below what else you guys want to see from me as far as the behind the scenes go of being a content creator um but yeah hopefully this was helpful in some way so yeah i will see you guys in the next one bye